Impossible. Hello everybody, uh, long time no see. Um, before we get into the video, I just wanted to say a quick word from our sponsor today. That's right, this video's got a sponsor. I'm a real YouTuber now, next thing you know, I'm gonna be having some kind of garbage late night talk show. So this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a mobile RPG done right. Now I know, you've probably heard about Raid everywhere before, but there's a great reason for it. Raid is one of the top three ranked RPGs on the Google Play Store, and it's just been nominated as a finalist for Google Play's Best of 2019 User's Choice Award. The game is insanely popular, with almost 15 million downloads in the last six months, that's crazy. So what is Raid? It's an epic dark fantasy done right. A hero collection turn-based game with over 400 champions for you to collect and personally customize. In Raid, you can gather orcs, undead, knights, elves, and more, and assemble a team from 16 heroic factions, discover 13 spectacular locations, and enjoy a fully voiced story campaign. Raid has a ton of crazy cool features. The first one being the multi-battle auto mode. Set battles to run in auto mode when you go out and do something else. Spend less time grinding and more time developing your teams and doing the fun stuff like those fights, dude. Raid also has weekly tournaments and events. Fighting in the arena, running special dungeons, or just leveling up your heroes, there's always a way to compete and win extra prizes every week. The game is growing crazy stupid super fast and check out this cool roadmap that they've given me. They have huge plans for updates in the game over the next six months. So there's basically infinite content for you to enjoy and you're never gonna get bored. You can find me in the game under the nickname Troyoboyo17 and if you're quick enough, you might be able to join my clan. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special links and you will get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Good luck, I'll see you in there and let's just jump into the video. So we're getting headline after headline about Matt Reeves, the Batman, and I personally am so excited. Batman isn't my favorite superhero by any means, but this movie's been in development hell for such a long time that to see it finally start production is really exciting and really inspiring to me. The more information that gets published about the movie, the more and more excited I become. Matt Reeves is an incredibly talented director and I trust Robert Pattinson in this role with my life. So needless to say, I basically have full faith. Now, first off, um, a bit of a premise. If you don't follow me on Twitter, you probably missed this, but I've decided that for upcoming movies, I'm gonna be using the fanboy pre-write series a little bit differently. I said in my Zelda video that I wanna stick to games for now, since if I pre-write a movie, it could end up ruining the end product of the story because of my expectations and stuff. And I still feel the same way. However, with the pre-write series, I'm able to talk about the things that I am personally excited about, with, instead of with the rewrite series where I just criticize stuff and make people mad. So since I don't wanna ruin the experience of the movie, since that would be unfair to the creators, for upcoming movies, I won't be doing full story pitches anymore. The effort required to make that kind of content is a lot, and it's really unhealthy to walk into a movie already against it with my own preconceived notions of what I would do. So instead, the series is gonna function as me talking about the individual things and ideas and small concepts that I would personally really like to see in the movie, since that allows me to get excited and talk about things without setting myself up for disappointment. I apologize if this goes against whatever kind of brand that I have, but it's what I wanna start doing. So with all that said, Let's just jump into it. So the first thing that I want to see in The Batman is, and this one's a doozy, Batman. I don't know what I expected. I know for a fact that Robert Pattinson is going to be incredible in this role. The guy just exudes Bruce Wayne energy. He lies and fucks with reporters for fun as jokes. No, the first time I went to a circus, somebody died. One of the clowns <laughs> died. I, I said this thing, but I actually made the whole thing up. <laughs> he falls asleep at events that are thrown for him, and he shit talks movie franchises that made him famous. He is perfect for the role of Bruce Wayne. And also, beyond that, he's just a phenomenal actor. I just saw The Lighthouse, and he was absolutely breathtaking. Holy shit not just because he's a good looking boy, but because he has so much talent and he puts so much care into his roles. I haven't seen his other big roles like Good Time or Lost City of Z, but now I'm dying to see him in more things. But more importantly, I want to talk about the direction of the character. Like I mentioned earlier, Batman is nowhere near my favorite character or anything. I find him a little oversaturated, and while his stories are oftentimes great, the character himself just doesn't resonate with me as much as other ones. However, that doesn't mean I don't see value in the character and that I don't like him. This is probably a little controversial to some of my comic fans out there, but my favorite run of Batman is the newest Tom King run in Rebirth. To me, the most important part of the Batman character is the issue of mental health and addressing trauma, and the thing that I always want to see in a Batman story is Bruce trying to come to 
terms with the trauma of losing his parents and working towards not letting it define him anymore. I need that growth from the character to find him interesting personally. I cannot stand the type of Batman who lets the loss of his parents destroy his humanity and turn him into a ruthless vigilante who just goes around crippling everybody in his path. I think there's a place for that kind of character and there's a place in stories for that kind of character, but not as the definitive version of the character, if you understand what I'm saying. Because I think that superheroes are meant to inspire and be looked up to, and Batman, when he's like this, really should not be idolized like that. Everyone always likes to say that Bruce Wayne doesn't exist. That there's Batman and then the face that he puts on to pretend to be Bruce Wayne, and he's only his true self when he's wearing the mask. The boys kept calling me Bruce. In my mind, that's not what I call myself. And I find that that mindset tends to overlook an incredibly important part of the character in his mythos. This character is more than just one layer. To the public, Bruce puts on the face of the billionaire playboy philanthropist who parties and donates to all those charities. Then for the people who know his secret, he puts on another mask, and that's the mask of Batman, who's stoic and in control and perfect at everything he does because he's Batman. Because I'm Batman! But then there's another side, the side that only Alfred, Dick, Selina, and Clark know. And that's the real Bruce Wayne. The real Bruce Wayne isn't a rich party boy. He isn't a perfect genius ninja who can do anything. He's just a kid who lost his parents and has never been able to cope with it properly. He closes that side off to as many people as possible so he doesn't seem weak, but in reality, it's that partnership and companionship that he needs to be able to move on and grow. So that's the kind of arc that I would want to see for Bruce. I want him to shed that outer shell and start to face his problems head on. I don't want to see Thomas and Martha die again for the millionth time, but I do want to see their impact on him and how the trauma affects him. Don't pull a fucking Uncle Ben on me. I would want Bruce to start the movie out neck deep in his pain, coping with his trauma by being the version of Batman that I don't like. The violent vigilante who cripples everybody, who goes too far, but over time he can learn and discover that that's not the way to live, and he can start being the hero that Gotham needs him to be. Moving on from that, let's talk about the Batsuit. Basically, it's still part of Batman, but whatever, I'm not great with this new list format. But I need this movie to get this Batsuit right. Before Ben Affleck, none of the previous suits did it for me. I cannot stand the black rubber armored look. The gray cloth is just so much more appealing to me. The Affleck one was nearly perfect, almost perfect. I would want them to make a couple of changes to it. The texture is a little too extreme. It'd be nice if they tone it down a bit to make it a little simpler looking. But the main thing that I really want out of this new bat suit is the rebirth color scheme. At the very least, I want the yellow outline. Maybe I'm biased since that was the bat suit when I first started reading Comics Weekly, but I think that that extra color from the outline gives it just enough pop and depth to the symbol and makes it stand out while allowing you to keep the giant bat, which I think is really, really cool. It also allows you to do some really interesting things with the lighting and stuff. The purple inside of the cape is also really great. And while it's not part of the Rebirth costume, I would love for the black briefs to come back, but I don't see them doing that. People can barely accept Superman wearing them, so people would lose their minds if Batman did it too. Lately, I've actually been watching the 2004 The Batman animated series on DC Universe, and I've been really enjoying it. I know it's not perfect. Bruce is a little out of character, and the tone is a little bit too light, and the character designs are a little out there, and especially following the animated series, it had impossible shoes to fill, but I personally find it really enjoyable. And I do think that the show has the best animation of any Batman property, and with that it has the best bat suit. The long cape that envelops him in darkness is just so perfect, and I'm dying to see that done on screen. Also, the way that Bruce is taller and not as bulky is a nice change of pace compared to what we're normally used to, with the giant muscles of most other interpretations of the character. I posted this on Twitter a little while ago, and something similar to this would be my perfect bat suit. I would love for them to have the white eyes, not all the time though, because I do think that seeing the eyes is important, but definitely in like a detective mode kind of style. I think that'd be amazing. That'd be a good compromise. Also, go crazy. Throw in the purple gloves. That'd be fucking wild. Now, moving on, onto the plot. So what we know about the plot of this movie has been kind of all over the place because of all the development hell that has gone through. When Ben Affleck was attached, it seemed like it would take place in Arkham Asylum with Batman being hunted down by various assassins, including Deathstroke, in kind of an Arkham Origins kind of way. And as much as I would love to see that, there's something more important that I need from this movie that looks like it's going to be the case. Matt Reeves has made it abundantly clear that this movie is going to be a detective story. And thank fucking God, finally. I've been waiting for that aspect of Batman to be explored in a movie for so long, basically as long as I've known about the character of Batman. Batman is the world's greatest detective, but we've never really seen that on screen before. The most we've ever gotten of that side of the character is in The Dark Knight, when Bruce took a piece of the wall with a bullet hole and shot different bullets into different walls to see what type of the bullet it was, and then he made a 3D reconstruction of that bullet to find that there's a fingerprint on it. It's just, that's, that's, like, what? 
So I want this to be a proper whodunit, with a serial killer on the loose killing off crime lords and other criminals. It's been said that The Long Halloween is going to be a source of inspiration, which is really great. That's easily Batman's best detective story. Even if it is kind of an easy pick, it'd be nice if filmmakers took inspiration for more than three Batman stories. There's more than just Hush, Dark Knight Returns, and Long Halloween, like come on guys. I think it would be cool if there were also elements of Mask of the Phantasm involved. I finally watched that movie for the first time, and it's great. It's a little bit overhyped if you ask me, but it's still really enjoyable and I really liked a lot of things about it. Both The Long Halloween and Mask of the Phantasm feature crime lords getting killed, but Phantasm had the bonus of Batman being basically framed for the murders. I think it'd be great to have Bruce be forced to face his own issues of being too brutal and violent and see how it affects his reputation with the police in the city. And I think that having the killer be someone who also wears a big cape and a mask would allow him to make that realization. Maybe like Gordon is against him for the majority of the movie until they realize they can work together to help Gotham. Throughout this kind of story, I want Batman to encounter a decent number of his classic villains. There are going to be a ton of villains in this movie. Some might even say it's too many villains, which I think is kind of ridiculous. The criticism of too many villains has never been something I can get behind. People always say that that was the problem with Spider-Man 3, that it had too many villains. That wasn't the problem with Spider-Man 3. Spider-Man 3, while I personally enjoy it, it has issues with its handling of certain concepts and ideas, but that has nothing to do with the number of villains in the movie. Amazing Spider-Man 2 really kind of only has two villains. It all comes down to how the story incorporates the villains and if it can do it in a way that works well. The Dark Knight, which a lot of people consider to be the best superhero movie ever made, technically has four villains in it on top of mob bosses and crime lords. Yet nobody says that that movie has an issue. So let's just speed through the villains that we know are confirmed for the movie. There's a chance there'll be more, but I don't really think that's likely. So first up is Catwoman. Not technically a villain, but fuck off, it's my YouTube video. First off, Zoe Kravitz is gonna be amazing. I know this for a fact, and if you don't think so, you are legitimately wrong. Sorry, that's just how it is. She's going to be the second best version of the character we've ever had, second only to Halle Berry in the masterpiece of French cinema, La Femme de Chat, which, as we all know, is film at its finest. I want a proper Catwoman. And that means I want her to be double-crossing, sneaky, clever, and she needs to have great chemistry with Bruce. We as the audience should be unsure if we can trust Selina, and she should really tempt that line between hero and villain. I would like it if at the end she ultimately chooses to side with Bruce. It's pretty standard Catwoman stuff, but it's really important to the character. And luckily, it's been pretty well represented in film, and I'd like that to continue here. I would also like a good suit design. I want goggles. I want cat ears. I want a whip. Give me all of it. Please don't quote that. Anne Hathaway overall was a pretty good Catwoman, but her suit design was just really, really bland. They tried to do the thing where the goggles became the ears. It just didn't look great for me. If they straight up just copied the Arkham look, I'd be happy. All right, moving on to the next villain that's been officially cast. Let's talk about the Riddler. Finally, we get to see the Riddler in a movie again. Now, as much as I love Dr. Eggman, Jim Carrey wasn't given the right material to work with when he played him. So I'm really excited to see the direction they take with the character in this. I'm not overly familiar with Paul Dano's work as an actor, but he looks the part. And from what I've heard, he's a great actor who's also going to do a really great job. One thing that I really need to see with Riddler is his superiority complex. Edward Nigma, or Edward Nashen, as he's going to be in the movie, is someone who by all counts is is a genius. He constantly wants to show off his intellect in more and more elaborate and dangerous ways, and he keeps getting shown up by Batman's skills. And that drives him more and more to do even more dangerous things to try and win. He's a sore loser, a crybaby, and I am so excited to see Edward from Twilight punch him in the fucking face. All right, moving on, let's talk about the Penguin. I really like Oswald Cobblepot as a character. He mirrors Bruce in a way, being from an upper class family and having to face his own hardships in life. Only he lost his family's wealth and reputation, which led to him moving on to crime. My favorite version for the Penguin is just a standard crime lord, like in the Arkham series. I don't want him to be wacky or crazy or go too far with the Penguin stuff like, hey, I'm gonna poison Gotham City's water supply. Whack, 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 whack. No, come on. He's just a guy with a monocle who sells guns. There's no reason that Cobblepot should ever be put into Arkham Asylum. So for this story, I would really want Penguin to just be the crime lord in the middle of all the murders. Maybe it's his guys who are being killed off, or it's his competitors, or anything to make him basically one of the prime suspects. Now as for casting, the rumor is that Colin Farrell is in the running, and I think he'd be an interesting pick. He's a little slim and tall for what I would picture for the character, but I think he could be good. He kind of reminds me of the Telltale Penguin. Whoever they end up picking though, nobody's gonna be as perfect as the Lord of Sex himself, Danny DeVito. <sighs> Oh, Danny. Oh, Danny, Danny, Danny. Just thinking about Danny DeVito in the role is going to make me want to say things that I get this video demonetized. So let's move on to the killer. The person behind it all, the mastermind, the person killing all the mob bosses and putting the blame on Batman's head. It is the Joker, baby. 
I'm kidding. No, please don't. I'm so sick of Joker. I don't want him anywhere near this movie. I'm sick of that clown. Give me some new shit for once. So I'm going to be honest. I have no idea who I would want to be behind everything. I'm not even going to try and think of something. But what I do want from the killer is for it to be somebody who mirrors Bruce's path in a way. Someone who wants to do good because of the trauma that they faced only to go about it in the worst of ways and get people killed. This revelation could force Bruce to reevaluate his own moral self and direction as the Batman, going forward from then on to be better and be the hero that he's capable of being. Now, lastly, the most important thing that I want is for Matt Reeves and everybody involved in this movie to ignore everything that I've been saying. Seriously, just let Matt Reeves do his thing. He's an incredibly talented director, like I've said before, and I trust his vision. Warner Brothers, as of late, has shown that they're willing to let directors have more and more freedom, especially compared to a lot of the big blockbusters that are coming out today. The release of Shazam, Joker, and even Aquaman has made that apparent, and I am 100% here for that mindset. So think of it this way. If I'm right, and Matt Reeves delivers every single promise that he's made by taking this project on, we get an incredible Batman movie that solidifies the character in film as he's represented in the source material, all while still being a great film in its own right. And if I'm wrong, and the movie's trash, I get to do a rewrite and make some money, so it's a win-win. At least for me, anyway. But there is one more thing that I do want to mention. Just a little itty-bitty, teensy-weensy, little tiny-tiny baby request that I would like to make from this movie and the rest of the franchise. Um, hold up, what was it? Oh god, I forgot. Batman does not kill. Like, Jesus Christ, I don't understand what's so difficult to get about that.